tonight. Give them the praise. Let's stand, everyone. Let's stand. It's another day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Why don't you just thank God for what he's already done? What do you say about that? Come on, let's thank him for what he's already done. God. Come on, let's thank him for what he's already done. Well, he woke us up this morning. He woke us up this morning. I'm going to testify for you. Started us on our way. Glory to God. How many of y'all got a mind to praise him? has the testimony if it had not been for the Lord on my side where 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 would I be glory to God glory to God come on and let's give him glory come on let's give him the glory Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. His name is great. Healing in his name. Deliverance in his name. There's power. There's power. In the name of Jesus. You know what? You can get healed just by calling on the name of Jesus. I dare you to just say, Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. God bless you tonight. We praise God for the Texas Interjurisdictional Convocation 2023. Amen. Comprised of all of the jurisdictional prelates of the state of Texas. We're getting ready to receive prayer from Superintendent Fred Patterson, followed by the Old Testament scripture 
Superintendent Mosley Hobson, Elder Daniel Walford will be giving us our New Testament scripture. After they come, we will be, we will be back into the hands of the interjurisdictional choir for the selection. Would you receive them at this time? Can the church say yes? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's try it one more time. This is a yes, Lord, church. Come on and say yes. Come on and say yes. Oh, yeah. together for such a time as this you brought us together for no other reason but to praise your name we didn't come to see who was here on tonight because you're already here you're already in this place move in us tonight God hallelujah have thine own way tonight Send revival in this place. Send revival in our hearts. Revive us again. Revive us again. Revive us again. And we'll tell you yes. We'll tell you yes. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for every jurisdiction. Father, we're praying that you will send newness to every area. We don't want to do church as we've always done it. Send us, hallelujah. Send your power, hallelujah. Send your Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Have your way, God. Thank you right now. Have your way. Glory today. Hallelujah. Touch the preachers. Touch every bishop tonight. Every supervisor, every superintendent and pastor, Father, 
Hallelujah. Touch your people tonight. 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 Have your wake up. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, we pray now that as we've gathered together for this convocation, it would be a convocation like never before. You've brought us through the storm. You brought us through the rain. You brought us through all types of turmoil. But we come for no other reason but to praise your name. We give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. And we give you the praise. It all belongs to you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Old Testament scripture reading is going to be found in the 24th book of Psalm, and it reads, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, and the world that they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have a clean hand and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from our God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. From the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. Acts, chapter 8, verses 5 through 13, the King James Version. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in that city. Verse 9, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, given out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done.
Shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. We give honor to God tonight to our chief apostle, the Bishop Jesus Shears, to our chairman, Bishop D.D. Wells, to our vice chairman, Bishop Leo. We thank God we have a general board member here tonight. We thank God tonight for the father of our, just, of our district, our jurisdiction, Pastor Houston, Bishop Houston, I'm sorry. We thank God for our treasurer, uh, and certainly we thank God for the prince of our church, uh, Prince of Texas. I don't see him here tonight, but to Prince W.E. Bryant, who is also a prince in his own right of Texas. We give him honor tonight. I give all of you one of the beautiful, most beautiful women in the world. I'm not talking about you mothers are disrespectful, but she's my angel, and I thank God for her being here, but most of all, I was reminded a few minutes ago as I sit and listen, my mind went back to Waco, Texas. I was just a little tired of a boy. And my mom used to take me there for the meetings when all of the bishops of Texas would come together. People were everywhere, all outside of what we call church house. And they had a time. Now is our time. We gonna have a time. I said we gonna have a time. We gonna see bodies healed because we came expecting something. How many of you drove all the way across the country with expectation of a move of God? I'm sick of these, these diseases killing us. Thanks, we got to pray and give God the glory, and I know he'll do it. God bless you. We're going to have church this week. Amen. Come on, give Bishop Walker a great big hand. Thank you, Bishop Walker, <laughs> welcoming us tonight. You all, I know it would be lengthy for me to call out all the names of our jurisdictional bishops of Texas, but... If, if you see your bishop here tonight, would you clap your hands for your jurisdictional? Just point at your jurisdictional bishop and say, that's my bishop right there, right there. 
Come on, it, listen, if you love the jurisdictional bishops of Texas, would you stand and clap your hands for the bishops of Texas? Come on, just show them some love tonight. Show them some love tonight. We want to show special deference to general board member member Bishop Charles H. McClellan. Give him a great big hand on tonight. God bless you, Bishop. Thank God for you. I want to introduce our inspirational speaker tonight. Our inspir inspirational speaker is a fourth generation Church of God in Christ member. He's a graduate of Lamar University with a Bachelor's of Arts in Applied Arts and Science. He also graduated from Texas Southern University with a Master's of Business Administration in Energy Finance. He's a member of the Harton County Interdenominational Ministries Alliance, currently serves as the Assistant Superintendent of the Kuntz Evangelistic District under the fellowship of Superintendent Arthur C. Smith. Served as the State Sunday School Superintendent for the Texas Gulf Coast Jurisdiction under the leadership of Bishop Destry C. Bell, Sr. Our speaker is the father of three adult children, Chastity Gilder, Caleb Gilder, and Sean Gilbert, Jr. I want you to receive our inspirational speaker tonight, Pastor Shan Gilder. Would you clap your hands for him as he comes? <laughs> Pastor Gilder. the Lord in this place. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and give God glory in this place. Come on, say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this place. Amen. We do honor the Lord on tonight. We definitely honor these fine bishops. Amen. The chairman, Bishop Wells, and to the assistant, my very own jurisdictional bishop, Bishop Destry C. Bell, Sr. Amen. We honor him, and we honor our general board, uh, Bishop, Bishop McClellan, and to Amen. My friends in the pulpit, to the, some of the ones that I know from my personal area, Bishop Cantu, amen. We honor him as auxiliary bishop. And to all these fine jurisdictional bishops that are in the house of the Lord, we do give God glory and praise in this place. God is worthy to be praised. Is that right? Amen. amen. I honor my wife on tonight who's here with me. Amen. She, she lost her mother, but she came to be with her husband on tonight. So y'all pray for her. And man, we're getting ready to bury her mother here in a couple of days. So you'll pray for that God will give us strength to make it through on tonight and for these next couple of days. But I don't want to uh, take any more of the time. I'm just thankful to be my, see my pastor here. Uh, Bishop Mark Smith is in the house tonight. We do honor him, my pastor, where I started at Holy Temple. I honor him on tonight. But from the word of the Lord, real quick, from the word of the Lord, amen. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 30. Amen. My wife, Sister Cecilia Gilder, I've been with her for 29 years, and I'm so glad, amen, that she's here with her husband on tonight. Amen. And my youngest son is present as well. So again, we are grateful. The word of the Lord, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 30. 1 Samuel, chapter number 30, and we're going to look at verse number 6. If you have it, you can stand for the reading of the word of the Lord, 1 Samuel chapter number 30, and we're going to glean the subject from one particular verse. And the verse reads, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stone in him, because of all the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself, in the Lord, his God. The grass wither, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Lord, we thank you for your word on tonight. 
We pray, Lord, for your anointing on the night from the top of my head to the very soles of my feet. We pray, Lord, that your word will go out under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me be exegetically correct, Lord. Let me be poetically sound. Let me be scripturally accurate in the name of Jesus that somebody might know who you are. And most of all, Lord, let the light be shown in your direction that we point the glory toward you because to you belong all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why are you going to your seat? I want to use for a subject on tonight. I want to use for a subject in the form of a question. And my subject is, who moved my comma? Somebody repeat behind me and say, who moved my comma? Somebody move my comma. In the English language, there's different types of punctuation. There's different types of punctuation that we use in language when we're writing a sentence. And when we have a sentence, the, the very thing we do at the end of the sentence to show that we are done with that sentence, we use what is called a period. A period ends, it ends the sentence. And then that's what's called a question mark. Whenever you're saying something in the English language, the first letter is always expounded a little bit higher than the rest of the letters, and then you expound it, but at the very end, you put what's called a question mark because you want the individual that you're talking to to understand that you're not making a statement, but you're asking them a question. And then not only that, but then there's also what's called an exclamation point. An exclamation point is just what it seems. It means that you are exclaiming to make a point. That means that you are serious about what you're saying. So when you use an exclamation point, it means that you are giving somebody a command. It means you're not giving them an option, you're giving them a command, which means that they must do it. And then that's what's called quotation marks. Quotation marks is when you want to mimic the very words of somebody. So you always say, my mama said, or my daddy said, or my sister said, and then you enclose it in quotation marks because you want the individual that you're talking to to understand that these are not your words. And then that's what we have, what's called a colon, a colon. A colon introduces information that comes after. You use a colon because you want to say something after it. And then also you use a colon because you want to tell time. That's why they tell you, you ask somebody a question, what time is it? They'll tell you 7 colon 30. So you use a colon to denote time, and then you also use a colon to denote information. And then you also use what's called a semicolon. A semicolon is something that could next two complete sentences that are related. It's, it's, it's something that you use in order, in order to keep from using a period, you can use a semicolon and it almost has the same meaning between two sentences. But the subject says tonight, who moved my comma? Somebody moved my comma. In, in the text tonight, the Bible said that David was greatly distressed. He was greatly distressed because of the situation that he was in. And if you go to the last part of that text, if you go to the last part of it, the Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord. But if you look at the text, the writer, whoever translated the text, omitted or forgot to put the comma. There's a comma that belongs right there after the word Lord that goes before his God. Because David was trying to get us to understand that punctuation matters. Oh yeah, punctuation matters. Punctuation really matters because it helps to underscore the tone of the individual that's doing the speaking. And so the first thing I saw here in this particular passage, I saw that David had issues when he was going through down at Ziklag. David was running from his life from Saul. He was running, and he had no idea if he was going to make it out alive or not. Anybody ever had to run for your life, and you didn't know if you was going to come out alive or not? But the Bible said that David knew to trust in his God. Amen. Anybody here trusting in the Lord? And so the first thing I saw here that David understood that when he was down in Ziklag running from Saul, he hooked up and linked up with the Philistines who was the king of uh, Achish, who was the king of Gath. He hooked up with him and God was very upset with David for going down into Ziklag. Yeah, he was upset with him. He, he was upset with David from going down there. And so the Bible said that David went down to Ziklag and he began to bother some people who were not bothered him. 
Yeah, he went down and he was bothering the Amalekites. And these, this particular group of Amalekites were not bothering David. They were minding their own business. But David was down in a land that he did not belong in, bothering people who did not bother him. And it caused him to lose some things that he dearly loved. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and say, you need to be what God needs you to be. Yeah, yeah, the Bible said David found himself in a bad situation. The first thing that David did, the Bible said he reflected upon his past. And let me tell you something, we in a time where we got to reflect upon our past. If you're going to get out of some of the situation that you're in, you need to reflect on your past. Amen. I believe it was Ty Tripper that said the same God back then is the same God right now. You have to learn how to reflect on what God done for you. Reflect on your past. And so the Bible said he made a decision to go to a land that he didn't belong in. He made a decision to go down and to gather what he didn't belong. And then he also made a decision to invade some people who were not messing with him. But he reflected on his past. The second thing I saw here is that David reevaluated his present. Let me tell you something, there's going to come a time when you got to reevaluate your present. You have to reevaluate where you are now. And the scripture say he was distressed from Saul. He was distressed from his condition because he didn't know how things were going to work out for his future. Amen. But I know I thank God I have a God that can bring me out all right. Amen. I have a God that can deliver me. And then not only that, but the Bible say he was distressed from losing his wives. Amen. If you look up that word distress, that word distress literally means means to be constricted. It means to be in a situation where life begins to close in on you. And I don't know about you, but I've been in some situations where it seemed like life is starting to close in on you. Amen. But how many know that we serve a God that will open the door and make a way? Amen. We serve a God that can get you out of your situation. We serve a God that can deliver you from what you're facing. I'm so glad I serve the true and living God. Amen. But somebody moved my comma. Somebody moved my comma. They tried they tried to translate the text, but they moved the comma. And it's so important that when you're translating, it's so important that understand the difference between an interpretation and a translation. There's two different phenomenons when you translate versus when you interpret. Amen. Because somebody said that in the book of Isaiah, when the scripture tells us about the, the child being born, the child be born, and let's know he should call his name Emmanuel, which was interpreted God with us. Yeah. But if you look at the text, that really is not an interpretation. If you look at the text, that's a translation. Because the word Emmanuel means Im Manu El, which literally means with us God, not God with us. So the writer, instead of interpreting the text, he actually translated the text. And when he translated the text, he took us and God apart. It's all right, it's all right. Yeah, he, he, he took us and God apart because God never intended for a preposition to be between him and his church. Yeah, yeah, he never intended for anything to come between him and his church. Amen. So it's not God with us. It's actually with us and God. Amen. I'm on side of him. I'm right by him. I'm connected to him. I'm joined to him. So God never intended for anything to separate the church. So the second thing, the second thing I saw is that David reevaluated his present. He reevaluated where he was. He began to think, he began to glean on the situation that he was facing and how his very own men that he had trained was trying to destroy him. Oh, yeah, yeah, life will put you in some situation where the very folk that you thought you can depend on were the very folk that end up turning their back on you. Oh, yeah, if you ain't been there, just keep on living. Amen. Life will put you in some situation where the people that you elevated, amen, will begin to think they're more than you, and you were simply just trying to help them. That's all right. That's all right. But as I come to my close right here, the third thing I saw is that David reconciled his future. Yeah, man, it's, and the word reconcile, it comes from the Latin word, which means to see eyelash to eyelash. Amen. Yeah, it literally means re 
called cilia, which cilia is a hair-like fibers. In other words, it means eyelashes, so that when a man looks at God, he looks at God face to face. And so when you look at God, you become eyelash to eyelash with God. And so David became to be eyelash to eyelash with his situation. Oh yeah, God will put you in some situation where you got to become eyelash to eyelash with what you're going through. No wonder they sung a song in the old days that said, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I'm the one standing in the need of prayer. Yeah, man, I can't look at nobody else, but I got to become eyelashes with my situation. I got to look at my situation face to face. And the Bible said that David began to reconcile himself with his future. And then he began to balance the mercy of God. And not only did he begin to balance the mercy of God, the Bible said he began to balance the attributes of God. And so when he found himself in a situation, the Bible said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord, comma, his God. Amen. But I want to know who moved my comma. That comma is very important for this reason. Amen. It's very important because David was trying to separate two opposing names because he wanted you to understand that his God was different from his Lord. The word Lord comes from the Hebrew word Yahweh. But when you put a comma, his God comes from the Hebrew word Elohim. And so David was saying that the same God, amen, who is my Yahweh, is the same God who heals my body. The same God who delivered me from my distresses. The same God who make a way out of no way. Because the word his Lord, amen, is Yahweh, and the word his God is plural, which means the Elohim God. It means he's the God of many faces. It means he's the God of many deliverances. It means he's the God of many ways. Amen. We serve a God that can do all things but fail. And so when David was caught in a crossfire, he said, I'm not worrying about my men killing me. He said, because when Saul tried to kill me, God was right there. He said, when the bear tried to kill me, God was right there. He said, and when the lion tried to kill me, God was right there. And then when Goliath tried to kill him, he said, God was right there. I'm so glad that I serve a God. Amen. That'll let me know that everything is going to be all right. Who moved my comma? Put my comma back because my comma make me pause. The comma make me pause and reflect. Anytime you see a comma in a sentence, it means that you're supposed to stop and reflect. And so David said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cried hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for saving me. You got to learn how to reflect upon your past. You got to learn how to remember where he brought you from. You got to learn that God is right there with you. And somebody said, well, preacher, he said, I still don't understand. What do you mean about this comma? Let me tell you how big a comma is. If somebody wrote you a check and they put a comma in it, that means they got to put some zeros at the end. I'm so glad that a comma matters to me. It might not matter to you, but it matters to me. And I remember back in 2003 when I first quit my job and I began to go in business and I sold a life insurance policy and I took the policy and the individual paid an annual premium. But when I got my check from the insurance company, they sent me a check for a monthly premium. And I looked at that check and I put it back in the envelope, sent it back to them. They said, Mr. Gilder, why do you send the check back? I said, because somebody moved my comma. That should have been a comma and a zero at the end. I stopped by to tell somebody, don't let nobody take your blessings because what God has for you, it is for you. Who moved my comma? Come on, let's pause and give God some praise. Come on, pause a minute. Come on and pause and tell him thank you. Come on and pause and give him glory.
right. Glory to God. Woo. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, don't let nobody move your karma. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. I tell you, only God can take something so minute and make it a big thing in your life. A comma, praise God. Come on, let's praise God for Pastor Shane Gilder. Come on, give him a great big hand. The Lord used him on tonight. The Texas Interjurisdictional Choir is going to bless us with another selection. After they come, we're going to be in the very capable hands of, Bill, of Bishop Shelton C. Rose, who's going to lead us in the ministry of giving. Come on, let's receive our choir. Can somebody clap your hands if God is your everything? Put your hands together. Come on. Put your hands together. Oh, no, no, no. Say, God is my everything. He's my Thing. My every 
Say God is about everything. He's my everything. He's your everything. God bless you. Come on, put your hand together for the choir, for the choir, for the choir. Oh, really, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. When Texas comes together, when Texas comes together, somebody say, when Texas comes together, with God in it. Oh, really, God. God bless you. One more time for the Lord Jesus Christ. Come over one more time. It's all about him. Hey. Somebody needs you about 30 seconds. Somebody needs about 30 seconds. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yay! Thank you. 
together. Put those hands together. Put those hands together for Jesus. All right, all right. Gee. God bless you. When Texas comes together with God in it, Come on, give God praise. Give him praise with your lips. Thanksgiving and praise, adoration unto the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Tell somebody if he did it yesterday, he can do it today. Come on in, somebody. Amen. We certainly thank God for. Let me hear you without the music. Let me hear you without the music. Without the music. Without the music. Without the. Now, God, and bless you through another, another three-digit weather day. Come on in, somebody. Bless you through another three-digit weather day. Amen. Here we are tonight. Amen. Thanking God for you, that are, the viewing audience right here. Amen. At Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ here in San Antonio, and that audience around the world, a virtual audience around the world. Come on, let's give God praise all over the house. Thanking him. Amen. Thanking him for another day. Another day. You've come far near and far, amen, to be in another holy convocation of the Texas Interjurisdictional, amen, Interjurisdictional Conference of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. I know that sounds a little long, but that's who we are on today. We certainly give honor to God. I know the house has been addressed, but I certainly want to thank God, amen. Let's give it up for our MC, amen, Bishop Godfrey Stirrup, Texas Southwest First. Amen. That says second on the program, take Southwest first is what it is. Thanking God for our chairman. Amen. Thanking God for Bishop Natia Wells, our chairman. He's almost there. He's almost there, but been a good two-year run. Our vice chairman, Bishop Destry Bell, Texas Gulf Coast. Amen. To all of these wonderful bishops. 
Amen. Our senior bishop, Bishop David Houston, and treasurer. Come on, let's give him some love. All the way from Tyler. Amen. We were down there. And certainly thank God for our general board member, amen, Bishop C.H. McCullough. Amen, McCullough. And to God be the glory. We have our vice chairman of the AIM conference with us on today. And thanking God for him, praise God. Our vice, look here, vice chairman of our AIM conference. Come on, somebody. We enjoyed AIM right there in Indianapolis, Indiana. And it was just act like Acts 2 and 4 all over again, praise God. And what a blessing. I want to appreciate and thank God for all the wonderful supervisors of women that are here on today. If you see your, first, your supervisor women, come on, give them some love right where you are. If you see them from all across this wonderful state called Texas is what it is, amen, Church of God in Christ. And certainly in his absence, amen, our presiding bishop, amen, Bishop J. Drew Shear. Let's thank God for our presiding bishop and the presidium of our great church. Amen. My first lady and wife, amen, 36 years, Sister Deborah Ann Rose. Wave, wave at them, sugar. Wave at them. Deborah Ann Rose. Amen. Thank God for Deborah Ann being 36 years back in July, July the 18th. So if y'all ahead of that or behind it, thank God for the 36 years. Amen. Praise God to all of these. My supervisor, she's here tonight. I want to thank God for Supervisor Yolanda Ford. Amen. Thanking God for her. Amen. Along with all of her co-laborers in the gospel, these wonderful supervisors of women that are doing such a wonderful job. Amen. The first lady, amen, of this uh, august entity called Texas Interjurisdictional Council of Church of God and Christ. Thank God for First Lady Wells. Amen. First Lady Wells. Praise God. To these superintendents, pastors, and elders, amen, that are with us on today, we appreciate you and love you with the love of God. We're going to prepare, amen, we have a good night yet ahead of us. What a wonderful word we just heard, a powerful word, a powerful word we just heard on tonight. And uh, let me publicly say real briefly, I want to thank God again for Bishop McCullough being with um, Southwest. Amen. At the multiplication of Southwest First and Southwest Second, I want to appreciate he, he along with Bishop Bryant that came down and helped to navigate and shepherd things. Let's thank God for our general board overall, general board and Bishop McCullough once again, once again. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask if Bishop Nichols, would you come and bless the offering as we get ready to go forward on tonight? Amen. We're here from Dallas and Fort Worth. Thank God. Bishop Nichols, Texas East. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your loving kindness and for your tender mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for thee that are giving at this time, and we pray that you would bless them in a special way. Pray that you would open doors and make ways. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Thank you. Amen, amen and amen. amen.
God bless you, saints. We're so glad you are joined our Texas Interjurious Convocation. We're so excited to have with us, even standing now, the Vice Chairman of the Texas Interjurious Council of Bishop, Bishop Dexter Bell, whom you know this bishop all across the Church of God in Christ worldwide. You know that he's a preacher of all preachers. Let us now hear the voice of the Vice Chairman of the Texas Interjurious Council of Bishop, Bishop Dexter Bell. Wow, Pastor Jeter, I'm so delighted that you would have me come on and join. And to all of our audience all around the world, around the nation, we are excited uh, here in Texas as we just embark tonight on our Texas Interjurisdictional Council of Bishops Holy Convocation. It started tonight. And uh, right now, we are giving, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to give, but I want to just invite you to tune back in on tomorrow night. And if you're anywhere in the driving vicinity of Texas and you can get here to San Antonio tomorrow night here at the Praise Cathedral, Church, Bishop Sheldon Rose, our host pastor, uh, we're having a wonderful time here. I want you to come and join us on tomorrow night for the official night. The Bishop Nathiel D.D. Wells will be preaching on tomorrow night. Great worship, great music, great fellowship. Come and be a part. Those of you who said, I thought I wasn't going to come, you watching tonight, get on in your car, come on down, get a hotel room, and, and join us on tomorrow night in a great time of fellowship and worship. Uh, Bishop, while the, uh, do you want to explain to, to our followers about how to give on tonight? Well, we do want you to share with us in our giving tonight. Tonight, you can give by going to Cash App, dollar signs, Praise Cathedral SA. 
dollar sign Praise Cathedral S8. You can give by the Givelify app. And you can also give by, I mean, by the Cash app. And also by the Givelify at Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ in San Antonio, T T San Antonio Texas uh, on the Ingle Beaglewood Road. You can either pop up there, you can give electronically, give 25, give 50, give $100. Give the best seat you can give to support this conference and the work that we are doing here together as a interjurisdictional council of bishops. Bishop Wells is our chairman. Uh, Bishop, I am the, the humble vice chairman. Bishop David R. Houston is our treasurer. Bishop Shelton Rose is our financial secretary. I'm telling you, we are blessed here in Texas, and I want you to come and be a part of this, even if it's just virtually, if you can't get here, let's support what, what God is doing in this hour and in this season. Bishop, we are Texas strong. Even tonight, we have a Jenna board member yes. with us. You want to tell us about what Jenna board member with us and also we have the vice chairman of AIM with us tonight. Yes. My God, we are, we are Texas strong. Yes. And Bishop, we have some followers now that may be tuned in that may not know how strong Texas are. So can you tell them even about how many jurisdictions are in the state of Texas? We have 20 jurisdictions in the state of Texas. 20 jurisdictions in the state of Texas. Uh, started with one, then divided into four, and then it just multiplied over the years. And all of us, all of these leaders are great leaders, great men of God. Uh, who are doing a great work for God. Just want to say that we are we are thankful that Bishop Charles H. McCullough, general board member of the Church of God in Christ, stopped in to be with us during this session. And then the Pastor Kale Mann, the vice chairman of the AIM convention is here. An impeccable young man with great integrity and great character. And uh, we, so we're excited about what God is doing. I tell you what, if you can't get here tonight, try to be here on tomorrow night for another wonderful time of worship, praise, and celebration. Thank you so much, Bishop. I know you got to get back in there. Yes. need you back in as our vice chairman of the Texas Introduction Council Bishop, Bishop Dexter Bell out of the city of of Houston. We thank God for him and look for him in the future. Something good is going to happen. My God, get ready. We have two more outstanding young people of our great church. It was the Lady Bridget Plato. You know him within the National Church. You know her for praise and worship uh, on Facebook Live. We're so glad that she's a part of the state of Texas. You love her across the world, but we thank God for her gifts and her talent. Lady Bridget Plato, can you greet the saints tonight? Pastor Jeter, thank you so much. Greetings, saints all over the world. We are here in this great city of San Antonio, Texas, and I represent the Levites. The Levites are here. We are here to give God praise and the glory. We thank God for this opportunity. I have a great choir. I want to thank my area coordinator, Lady Taria Porter, who has been so helpful, and her staff. Right. I want to invite you to come to the choir. If you're here, you sing, we need your voice. We're going to be singing something you already know, so you don't don't have to worry about that. Absolutely. Lady Plater, we have tonight, but tell them about what's going to take place tomorrow morning. Just in case some saints uh, is going to be in the city of San Antonio, if you want to travel in, what's going to take place tomorrow morning and also tomorrow night? Tomorrow morning is Women's Day. Tomorrow morning is Women's Day. We will be right here at 9.30 a.m. 9.30 a.m. We will be kicking it off with the women. We will be singing. We will have a great service. We will have a great word. My supervisor, the mother, Irma Parker, the My Texas God. North these fourth ecclesiastical jurisdiction will be the speaker. So you want to come on out tomorrow morning, and then tomorrow night will be the climax of it all. Let's come and hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Bishop Nathiel Wells, my bishop from the Texas Northeast fourth ecclesiastical jurisdiction, the, the chairman. He will be given the word, and we're going to close it out in a big way, like only Texas can do. Lady Plater, not only are you a part of the uh, state of Texas, and we thank God for your gift ministry, but also you serve within the National Music Department. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you do within the National Music Department? Yes, I am the Executive Hospitality Coordinator for the International Music Department, where our president, Dr. Myron Williams, is the president. I also serve as the vice president of our region, which is Texas. Dr. Myron we we Williams is the president. President. So I am just excited. I work in the International Music Department, and this is just an extension of what we do 
um, internationally. We thank you so much. Thank you we, so much. Listen, there was shouting while going and giving God praise, even the right for the offering because of God has given us only a gift and she's anointing. We call it, she's all it. Uh, <laughs> tune in to her. This is Lady Bridget Plater. Thank yes. you so much, thank Lady so Plater. Much, we look for you tomorrow Jesus. night to join us again I'll on tomorrow here. night. Thank you so much. My sisters, brother, stay to your feet. The Bishop <laughs> Dexter Bell, the Vice Chairman of the Texas Bishops. My God, my good friend, we have a young man with us from the city of New York. New York, New, New York, yes, New York. Yes. The Vice Chairman of the Ames Convenient of the Church of God in Christ, Pastor Kale Mann. Man, Pastor G, I Man, appreciate that greeting. so glad to have you. Listen, I am happy to be here. I had to come all the way from New York to be here in Texas. Lord they say Jesus. they do everything big in Texas. Everything. And I had to come out here to San Antonio to be here. And my God, what an amazing kickoff it has already been. Absolutely. I appreciate Bishop Wells for the extending the invitation to be a part of this phenomenal my collection God. of Texas and yes, the jurisdictions. Sir. This is an amazing thing. Texas is definitely strong, and I'm excited strong. to be a it's part strong. of it. It's strong. It is. Not only is he here tonight to represent the uh, National AIM Department, but God has given this young man a gift and also uh, resources that the Texas Bishop invited him in to come and talk to us or even on tomorrow. So you are a pastor, you are elder, you are bishop, you are superintendent. You need to be here at Praise Cathedral at 9.30 a.m. We'll be meeting right here. Come for breakfast and come here with this man, young man is going to present to us on tomorrow. So, Pastor Kel, man, just tell the saints, the, tell the followers that are tuned in tonight what you're going to do. Sure. What you got if, if you are in the San Antonio, uh, Texas area, um, it will be a great opportunity to come in on tomorrow. We're going to discuss, do a whole seminar um, discussing on preparing our churches and make sure we are structurally sound exactly. in order to receive um, and to identify funds that help with kingdom ministry. Hmm. As we know, all of us have a work from the Lord. And the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Yes. And I believe God has given us strategies and tools to get our spiritual pick shovels out and get all that God has in store for us. So you want to come on out and receive that information and, and you know, what we do to help local churches all across the brotherhood. But we're here in, in Texas, in San Antonio, on tomorrow morning. You, you want to be he, here. He had, he had to come to Texas. Yeah. He had to come to Texas. <laughs> Our friend and brother, Pastor Kel God Mann bless you. from New York, the vice chairman of the Ames Convention. And I'm listening. Every pastor, look this young man up. He has something that can bless you in your church. Listen, we're God so glad you. to have you. Always I know you got to get back to the church, get some, so get some of this Texas church. Yes. Get some of this Texas <laughs> yes. church. All right, God. Uh, adjutant, one of our servant leaders, uh, Elder Mark Switzit, is with us. My friend and brother, we serve and we work together uh, here in Texas. Dr. Sit, what's going on? Tell us about what's happening. What, tell us about what's happening. Well, I'm the regional for the state of Texas and Oklahoma, and we're just trying to make sure we just do everything decent in order for our leaders, our bishops, the Texas bishops. So we want anyone that want to be a part of this team. We're doing it from the top down, and we won't mean anything when it comes to excellence. We just want to do everything decent in the order. So let's just come on the board, get with your chief adjutant, get with your bishop if you want to be a part of the adjutancy for the Texas Interjurisdictional Council of Bishops and that we can go from there. God bless you. Listen, we're going to get back to our service tonight. Tune in to the Texas Engineering Holy Convocation. Tune in tonight, tomorrow, and we thank God for you. God bless you. God bless you. The Bishop Nathaniel D. D. Wells, Chairman of this Holy Convocation. Additional announcements, uh, and I'm sure there are others, but I do have a couple here that we will share with you this evening. Uh, <clears throat> you are invited to join in a joyous celebration commemorating 60 years of ministry of the Honorable Bishop Prince E.W. Bryant, Sr. 60 years in ministry. That celebration will take place in Houston, Texas at the Island of Hope Church of God in Christ, 1505 Greg Street, where Bishop Bryant is the pastor. The keynote speaker will be the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ everywhere, Bishop J. Drew Shear. 
a financial gift in the amount of $60 will allow your name to be included in the patron list. Just a donation of $60, $1 commemorating each year that he has served as a preacher and a prince of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, a financial gift in that amount will allow your name to be included. And the ways to give, may I share with you? You may do so uh, by, um, through the Cash App, that is dollar sign, the island, church, C-O-G-I-C. Repeat if you will. Cash app, dollar sign, the island, C-O-G-I-C. Or Givelify, Island of Hope, Church of God in Christ. Again, Givelify, Island of Hope, Church of God in Christ. Please note in the memo section, 60th year celebration. Bishop William H. Watson serves as the, uh, the general celebration chairperson of that wonderful event, upcoming event on September 11th, 2023. And then finally, on December 15th, the Texas Southwest First Jurisdiction will honor its jurisdictional prelate, the Honorable Bishop Maurice Green, in a gala celebration. <laughs> December the 15th, 2023, will take place in one of the most prestigious places between uh, San Antonio and the Atlantic Ocean, that is the Woodlands Waterway Plaza, Houston, Texas. You don't want to miss that. For further information, you may contact uh, Bishop Godfrey Serp or others of the Texas Southwest First Jurisdiction. Thank you. Please be governed according to these uh, announcements. Thank you. Come on again. Bishop Jenkins, a great big hand. God bless you, Bishop Jenkins. Bishop Jenkins has served as the secretary for this great council for a number of years. This council enjoys stellar leadership. Bishop Shelton C. Rose has, served, has been serving as the financial secretary. Give him a hand. And thank God. One of the fathers of Texas, Bishop David R. Houston, has served as a treasurer for a number of years in this council. Come on and give him a great big hand, Bishop Houston. And the vice chairman of the Texas Interjurisdictional Council of Bishops, Bishop Destry C. Bell, Sr. Come on and give him a great big hand. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we receive our chairman of this council who is going to introduce our speaker. Our chairman is coming, and he is the jurisdictional prelate of the Texas Northeast Fourth Jurisdiction. Receive the chairman of the Texas Interjurisdictional Council of Bishops, none other than the Honorable Bishop Nathiel D.D. Wells. Come on and clap your hands and receive the chairman. I love that old-time way I love that old-time way Well, the preacher was preaching, deacon was shouting Everybody living and nobody doubting I love that old-time way Well, I love that old-time way I love that old-time way Everybody living and nobody down. I love that old time. Oh, 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 
bless you. I just kind of felt a little let off in me. It is such a, please be seated, it is such a wonderful delight to be here in San Antonio, Texas. Come on, let's give San Antonio a hand. You don't ever want to get up in a city and call the wrong city. <laughs> we are blessed to be here. Uh, uh, the last time I was here, the Bishop's Conference was here uh, in 2016, I believe. And I had the wonderful privilege of preaching in that conference. And I jumped off of this stage. There won't be no jumping this week. <laughs> A little older and a little stiffer, but we are delighted to be here. Uh, this this is a historical church, though it's new and the building. But this is a historical church. Uh, you had a great leader, and the person of Bishop Agahar. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I suppose do. I uh, I remember coming here for vacation, and the church I believe it was downtown somewhere, and I went over on vacation, and he asked me, "Can you preach?" I said, "I think I can." He said, well, I want you to preach this morning. I preached, and he said, uh, now, young man, I don't want you to raise no offering. I don't want you to do no altar call. Just preach. And as I began to preach, by the time I got through, he said, son, do the altar call. <laughs> uh, got almost through the altar call. He said, man, get the money. <laughs> so I guess I did all right. It is a, I appreciate God. Thank God for the bishops of Texas. Let's give them a hand. We are, we are blessed to have the majority of the leadership of our church, uh, the churches in Texas here on tonight. Uh, these are great men. These are men that love God, that love God's people, and love his church. And I am thankful to God for the last almost two years, they allowed me to sit in this spot. And I appreciate the peace and the love that have been shown these two years. For me, will you give them a hand? We're thankful for the bishop District Bell, uh, the, chair, the uh, assistant chairman, and we're thankful certainly for our treasure, uh, Bishop Houston. He has held this position for many years and have done us well. He is, we call him the father of Texas. And certainly the pastor of this church will appreciate this church for allowing us to come and be in these have our services in this place this week. Our general board member, uh, Bishop Prince Bryant, and certainly we appreciate Bishop William Watson, the uh, second vice chair to the board of bishops. Uh, we're blessed tonight to have with us, and I'll come back in a few moments, but we're blessed to have Bishop McCullen here uh, general board member, not only is he a general board member, he, but he is the person that chairs the leadership conference for the Church of God in Christ, and he is doing an excellent job. Uh, he has became a dear friend to me, and I am thankful tonight that he came by to be with us. We're thankful to have Elder Mann, uh, one of the vice chairs of our aim. Uh, isn't it wonderful when our church come to see about us? The leaders of our church 
come to see about us. Will you receive, will you, for me, stand on your feet and let's receive General Board Member Bishop C.H. McCullough. Please be seated. Thank you, Bishop Wells, and out of respect for the opportunity just to have a moment, I want to celebrate the great bishops of Texas, and certainly, absolutely, without any doubt, we applaud the presiding bishop and chief apostle of the greatest church in the world, the Honorable Bishop J. Drew Shear. Can you ever celebrate him tonight? Come on, you don't have to be here. We can just celebrate. He's our leader. Yeah, there you're right. There you go. Let's thank God for our leader, Bishop J. Drew Shear. It's all right if you even stand. It's okay to do that. Uh, we believe in celebrating leadership. There you go. That's good. Yeah. Sometimes people give you bricks while you live and bouquets when you die. But it's always good to know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord. I am serving in this position as chairman of the leadership conference because of the presiding bishop who I believe the Lord uh, spoke to give me an opportunity. And he assembled a great team surrounding us. Bishop Wells is a part of that great team. I want to night uh, acknowledge all of the great bishops that are here, certainly uh, Bishop Destry Bell, Vice Chairman, and to uh, the Father. You have many instructors, but not many fathers. So we celebrate Bishop Houston tonight for his outstanding service to God's people and to the church. Uh, we celebrate Bishop Watson, second uh, Vice Chair of the Board of Bishops, and to all of you tonight, uh, Vice Chair of the Ames Convention. I'm just glad to be among the saints. That's what my inheritance is, is among the saints. And I'm thankful tonight. I'm c coming tonight just to say thank you, Texas, because you are now a part of history of making the 2023 Leadership Conference the greatest conference that we have ever had. And I want to thank God for you. Can you praise God for yourself tonight? You made it happen by the grace of God. And I want to appreciate your uh, unselfish commitment, uh, your presence, your giving, all of what you did. For those of you who may not know, we're headed to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, December 22nd, 2024. Another Hyatt Regency there, a uh, very palatial place. And again, we're believing God to do great and wonderful things. My mother told me as a young man, she said, Charles Henry, she said, give God the glory and he'll give you the victory. Found out that she was absolutely right. To all these wonderful bishops, wives, and supervisors, and lovely ladies of the Lord, I want to thank God for you because you pray for bishops and pastors, some of which you are married to, but it's because of your fervent prayer that God has favored them to do as well as they are doing. It is true. Beside every good man, there is a good woman. And if you've got a wife by your side that's helping you in ministry, you need to appreciate her and thank God for her because she feels what you feel. And God has certainly given you somebody to be indeed a help me to you in this time of ministry challenge. I want to thank God for Bishop Nathia Wells who joined in with us, uh, Bishop Tate, who is not here, I don't believe, but we thank God for him. Bishop Jenkins, if you'll come quickly, please. There's a little presentation we want to give on behalf of the uh, great leadership team that Bishop Jeju Sheard assembled, and I'm privileged for me to serve. Uh, Bishop Jenkins, you'll come. There's a little presentation we want to get. I jumped on a plane, the fastest thing I could get on to come here to Texas tonight, leaving in the morning, but I'm just glad I made it because y'all act like them folks do in Milwaukee. That's a part of the Church of God in Christ. They run, jump, dance, and shout, and sing just like y'all. There must be a connection between uh, the saints of God, Bishop Mason would say, in the everywhere. Can somebody say in the everywhere? Yeah. Psalms 50 verse five, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So because of your sacrifice, God has favored this great church. And the leadership conference of 2023 tonight would like to make a, uh, just a memorial presentation. And because of the young man that, that uh, served as the chair of the local committee, uh, Bishop Nathiel D.D. Wells, I'm gonna ask him when I sit down what that D.D. stand for. But tonight, we'd like to present this 
to uh, Bishop Wells. Would all the Texas bishops please stand? Would you mind just standing, Texas bishops? Because it was you who encouraged uh, the people that work with you, superintendents, pastors, administrative assistants, saints, to be a part of the leadership. And on tonight, uh, this little uh, significant uh, presentation is to Texas. But you know there has to be a leader uh, to everything if you're going anywhere. And this tonight says, uh, from the Church of God in Christ Leadership Conference, presents the Outstanding Service Award to the Texas International Jurisdictional Council of Bishops for financial and staff support extraordinaire to the 2023 Leadership Conference, Dallas, Texas, Bishop Nathan Wells, local chair, C.H. McClellan, national leadership chairman, the Bishop, Honorable Bishop J. Drew Shear, Chief Presiding Bishop and Chief Apostle of the Church of God in Christ. I need to give a special recognition to Evangelist Myra Banks, who I called, and she took it from there and made this come to be what it is. So tonight, Bishop Wells, if you come for just a moment, we present this to you on behalf of the Leadership Conference and the Texas Bishop. And may the Lord continue to bless you. Bless you all. Thank you, Bishop McCullum. Thank you, Bishop Shear. Uh, let me do want to take a moment and appreciate the uh, women that serve with us as wives and district and state supervisors. Uh, certainly, I appreciate God for what you've done and what you do. We thank God for my supervisor, that in the person of uh, Mother Arma Parker. And uh, each one of you in your perspective areas, and I do appreciate God for the lady that have stood with me for 50 years. Uh, last November, uh, we were married for 50 years, and I am delighted to have her in my home, in my life. Uh, she is my life partner, and I appreciate God for her. Uh, tonight, I have asked, uh, I, I need y'all to pray for me. They said I supposed to preach tomorrow night. And I need some folk that, that know how to get a prayer through. I don't need no fakers and shakers. If you know how to pray, say, Lord, please help him. Because he, he ain't doing no jumping. And just pray that God will give me a word. Uh, I need a word from the Lord. Will you receive the, the, one of our fathers? Uh, I was talking back in the back, and I found out that Bishop Lawson, though he looks like he's about 50, he's about 84 years old. <laughs> and since Bishop Mays is the auxiliary bishop under his leadership, I have asked him to introduce him tonight. I have given him that honor. Will you receive Bishop J.O. Lawson at this time? Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's a great honor for me to be able to present the speaker for tonight. The house has already been addressed, so I won't do that, but I certainly honor everybody. Uh, when I think of the man who's to speak tonight, who's with um, our jurisdiction, Texas Western, there are three words that come to my mind, not all of them applicable to him, but I'm using those three words because of the way we work in our churches. Uh, one of those words is, uh, dependency. Another word is um, uh, independency. <laughs> and another one is interdependency. Um, we know if you're dependent, it's sort of like your mission. Everything's coming to you, you know, in your church, etc. If you're independent, you try to do it yourself, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But if you're interdependent, you are working, trying to deal with one another and try to get things going. The man that I'm getting ready to present is, uh, has worked 
with us in our jurisdiction in an interdependent way, giving and taking, giving and taking, giving and taking. Uh, I've known him for a number of years, 20, at least 20 years, maybe more. Um, but he had come from a, another jurisdiction. He's an ex-military man, sergeant major. Uh, he uh, had come from this other jurisdiction. As a matter of fact, the jurisdiction I was in, uh, Arizona, I was the jurisdiction secretary over there for many years, way back, way back, way back. And since you know my age, so you know, <laughs> I go back a few years. <laughs> Um, and, uh, but I said, I live in Texas, so why should I cross two states? Bishop Mays was a member of a church that was still hooked up with Arizona. Nothing wrong with Arizona now, don't get me wrong, it's just a matter of where you are. And he decided that he was going to start a church there in the Texas Western Jurisdiction area, El Paso, Texas. And so he came to me and said, you know, I've got, I can't be running across two states to, to, to get to that jurisdiction. And I thought I'd want to work with you. And he was just beginning a church. And I was very pleased to have him because I think I'd met him a couple of times before then. And this, I know it was 2000, I think, when he came to me. So this was, that's 23 years ago. And I noticed his interdependency attitude in terms of church building. He wasn't looking for anything just without giving something. It was always give and take. And he, um, he uh, was very respectful because of his military background. I guess he spent 20 some years or more in the military. And uh, I think that was because a part of his training it had nothing to do with my being older than him. I don't, well, something to do, but, but he was always that way, if he, he disagreed with something I said, he didn't worry about it during, in the public. He would take me back to the back and talk to me. And then when we finished, then we'd come back out united. And uh, I kept looking at that, and the Lord impressed upon me as time went on, since you know we're still growing and growing out there in that desert, to recommend him for being auxiliary bishop because he met all the qualifications and I called the presiding bishop at that time, uh, Bishop Blake, and uh, said, I got a man, you know, I'm, I'm old, I need some help out here. And, uh, but I've got a man who fully, is fully qualified. So I want him to be the auxiliary bishop there. Bishop Mays is a well-educated man, has, I know, three degrees, bachelor's, master's, uh, honorary doctrine, and he also has an academic, nearly an academic, he said everything for the academic doctrine except uh, finishing the dissertation. Um, he's uh, independent financially, he's a builder. He built his church, a nice church. Uh, well, he started off in the storefront, as many of us did out in that area, but he's got a nice building now, church, he fully paid for three or four more or more acres of property. And then he had this vision for the community and he was always involved in interdependence in terms of how he supported the jurisdiction as well as his own work. Uh, he's in charge now of a, a leadership conference. He's been doing that for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. I don't know how long. And uh, I don't know a better man to have served with me for during that period of time. He's been a big help. He's always been there to help strengthen our jurisdiction. Now, we, if you look at the list, you'll see we're in Texas, and we're not the biggest jurisdiction, but we're not the smallest either, even though we are in the desert. Uh, and part of the uh, reason that we keep on moving up, in, although we are in the desert, with small number of black people, we, we, you know, we, we bring in everybody, is it, because of Bishop Mays. Now, he's not the only one of these great men we have. We've got others. As a matter of fact, I see another one right there. He was my first administrative assistant. His name is um, Murchison, behind, in the second row. Look, he's right up front to support the, ex we call this man, I made the title up, executive administrative assistant. I'm talking about Bishop Mays. So, uh, 
I thank God for the man. Uh, he's married. His wife, I think, is here somewhere. Uh, where are you, Mother? There she is, Mother Mays. And she's always been extremely supportive. She's one of our district missionaries. She works right with her husband. He's over a district. Uh, he has one son, uh, praise the Lord, and he has a grandchild, I think. Yeah. All right. And they're just such great people. Now, his personality is far different from mine. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we get along just fine. And so he puts a little balance in the leadership there in the Texas Western Jurisdiction. So therefore, we need people to give balance. I got another man that's mean like me, and that's Murchison. But, <laughs> but <laughs> this man puts a lot of balance in this thing. And I don't know, I better just shut up because uh, you don't get a preacher in front of a mic, he might talk too long. None other than Bishop Albert, Auxiliary uh, Bishop Albert J. Mays, and I, I think he's a pretty good preacher too. And we're going to find out tonight, right? And our chairman, our chairman wanted to put him up, I think, or somebody on the committee, and it was all right with me. And I don't, I guess they asked me, can he preach, can he do, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can preach. And we're going to find out, yeah. And the choir is going to give us a number. Yeah, yeah. And then after that number, you're going to hear from Bishop Albert J. Mays, Jr., retired Sergeant Major, well-educated, and uh, executive, uh, 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 executive assistant, praise God, uh, not first administrator, executive administrative assistant of the Texas Western Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ, and the pastor, what's the name of your church? Word of Life, Word of Life he called it, Church of God in Christ. Amen. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Put those hands together for the Lord. Amen. Now that's okay for a little pity pat, but let's let's give God a hand clap. his name we bless his name we bless his name we bless his name somebody didn't wake up this morning somebody is in ICU somebody is in hospice care somebody is behind prison walls but we bless his name the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you now in the matchless name of Jesus. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for keeping us throughout this day. Thank you, Lord, for your stretched out hand. Thank you, Lord, for your omnipotent mercy. Now, Lord, if I stand here behind this pulpit, I ask, Lord, that you will use me for thy glory. Lord, I don't know how to come out. I don't know how to come in. But, Lord, I believe you now that a word is going to go forth on tonight, that somebody's going to get saved, somebody's going to get delivered, demons are going to be leaped out of body. In the name of Jesus, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way filled with the Holy Ghost on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. You may take your seats if you can. Hallelujah. We do give honor to, the, to, the, to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we thank God again for his grace and for his mercy. I understand that the house has been addressed, but I do would like to pay homage uh, to the leadership uh, that's assembled here on tonight. And I bless the Lord for Bishop C.H. McClellan, general board member. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise for him. Also Bishop Nathaniel Wells, also the chairman of the Texas, hallelujah, interjurisdiction council of bishops. Also the vice chair as well, Bishop Destry Bell as well. To all the bishops of the Texas Interjurisdiction Council of Bishops. Just show them all some love on tonight. I bless the Lord also for my bishop that I've had the privilege of serving with now for almost 23 years. That's none other than the Bishop J.O. Lawson. And I've learned so much under his leadership in 23 years. Amen. He's a scientist, but he loves for folks to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for 2013 when he called me up on the phone and he says, he said, uh, at that time, I was superintendent. He said, superintendent, I would like to recommend uh, you uh, before Bishop, uh, Bishop Blake uh, to serve as an auxiliary bishop. And the, my, my response to him, of course, was, no, that's not me. I said, I'm just trying to learn how to be a superintendent. He said, and he, I don't know whether he remembers this or not, but he said, are you telling God no? I said, no, sir, Bishop. I said, do what you have to do. So since about uh, November 2014, we bless the Lord for his grace and for his mercy. We thank the Lord also for the Texas Western Women Supervisor, Supervisor D. Lynette Reddick. God bless her. We bless the Lord also for all the women supervisors, all the bishops, all the pastors' wives as well. God bless you. I thank the Lord for my lovely wife, uh, District Missionary Willie Mae Mays. I want you to just stand. 42 years. Just stand, if you don't mind. Amen. Good Lord, a hand clap. 42 years. And thank God we're still growing. 
Amen. Also, we do have some members here from Word of Life Ministries, where there's life in the Word, all the way from El Paso, Texas. Amen. Hey, let, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for you as well. And then we have others who have relocated to the San Antonio area who were once members of Word of Life Ministries. We thank God for you as well. Amen. So I know everybody's sitting back and say, well, what is this young, this, this uh, uh, retired sergeant major, superintendent, auxiliary bishop is going to do? And my first reply is, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm just putting it into the hands of the Lord. And so we're just going to ask that you would just turn with me to Acts, the eighth chapter, and I just want to read, uh, just for your hearing, uh, verses 5 and 6. And it reads as thus, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached to them. And the multitudes with one accord heed the things spoken by Philip. That's okay, that's just a technological problem hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. From these words I have derived as my thought for the evening, I introduce to you Jesus. Now keep in mind is that again, I bless the Lord for this opportunity to be able to share uh, a word about Jesus. And so I wanna just preach about Jesus. You may take your seats if you can. As we kind of examine the background setting of this scriptorial passage is that it does have a historical significance. Of course, is that the quarrel between the Jews and, and the Samaritans was centuries old. Back in the eighth century BC, the Assyrians conquered the Northern Kingdom whose capital was Samaria. The Northern Kingdom consists of 10 tribes of Israel and the Southern Kingdom, of course, consists of Judah. During the era of Jesus Christ is that there were three definite divisions in Israel. Uh, first, we had in the south, we had Judea. That was denoted as the Holy Land. Also, we had Galilee as well. And keep in mind is that in Galilee, you had the Jews and the Gentiles is that they dwell together. And also, we had Samaria. And of course, Samaria, Samaria was the dwelling place of poor Jews. They were called half-Jews and half-Gentiles. Mount Gerizim was considered as the sacred mountain of the Samaritans and has been so for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. On the summit, it is a rock which the Samaritans believed was the place where Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac. When Jesus met the woman of Samaria, Jesus said unto her, he, he said, give me a drink. The woman replied, you being a Jew, that I am a Samaritan woman, and that why are you asking me for a drink? The Samaritans claim that it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worship. But Jesus says is that it is not so much at this particular mountain that, that makes such a significance. Jesus said is that the hour is coming indeed it is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Samaritans needed an introduction of Jesus and that Jesus has a way of ordaining his introduction based on his infinite wisdom even before the foundation of this world. And so Jesus was able to call one by the name of Philip. And keep in mind is that Philip was, he started out as a deacon. However, the Lord used him as the first evangelist to preach Jesus. And also the Samaritans at this particular time is that they had a sense of urgency to hear about Jesus. It says that they were on one accord, they was on one mind, spirit, and purpose to hear the gospel message of Jesus. Philip introduced the Samaritans that Jesus is the Son of God. Now God has a way of orchestrating the introduction himself of his Son. God introduced Jesus' divinity. 
in Mark 1, 11, after John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the Jordan River, in accordance to Mark 1, 11, it says that there came a voice from heaven saying that thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus had a way of also introducing himself and Jesus introduced himself in his own divinity. In John 1 and 1, he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus also, he introduced his divinity again. The Bible says is that when he went up to the mount called Transfiguration, and he took with him Peter, James, and John, and, all, and somehow is that when Jesus was able to ascend up into this mount, that, that instantaneously is that the radiance of Jesus became greater than the sun. And suddenly there appeared with him one by the name of Elias and one by the name of Moses. Well, Peter says is that, he said, it is good for us to be here. He said, let us make three tabernacles. He said, one for Jesus. He said, one for Elias and one for Moses. And suddenly there was a voice that tends to ring out hallelujah from heaven. And God says that this is my beloved son. And he said, I want you to obey him. And so here we have an introduction of Jesus' divinity again. But also along with that is that Jesus introduces his humanity. And his humanity was introduced in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says that he sweated with great drops of blood. And he says is that, he said, Father, he said, remove this cup of horror away from me. Because somehow or another, he began to think about Calvary. He began to think about how Thomas was going to deny him. He began to think about how Peter, hallelujah, was going to, hallelujah, also betray him. And also by, by Judas was going to, hallelujah, also talk about him and deny him for 30 pieces of silver. Oh, I just want you to help me a little bit. And somehow or another, he began to break out in great drops of blood. And he said, Father, he said, remove this horror away from me. But he said, not my will, but he lets let thy will be done. And so this was his introduction of his humanity. But also the lame man at the gate called Beautiful, he got an introduction of Jesus too. And he had to need this introduction because the Bible says that there was one by the gate of Beautiful. And somehow or another, this man was lame from birth. And he began to see people. Peter and John, and you know, it's good for us to go to prayer. The Bible says that they went to prayer three times a day. And somehow or another, they saw this man lying at this gate called Beautiful. And the man began to extend his hand, and he said, give me some alms. But, but Peter, he was the spokesman. He was the great advocate. And he said, silver and gold have I none. But that's what I have I give unto thee. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. Somehow or another, the man just did not have the vitality. And so what Peter did, he grabbed his right hand. And the man began to leap and he began to praise God. And so there is something about the name of Jesus. The Bible say, he said, in the name of Jesus, he said, rise up and walk. Look at your neighbor say, on today, somebody needs an introduction of Jesus. You need a healing in your body. Jesus got the power to heal your body. This man jumped up and he leaped up and he began to praise God. Well, I have to ask a question in my educated mind that, that what is in the name of Jesus? Well, the, he say every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and that he's in Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. There's something about the name of Jesus. When we use the name of Jesus, we come in his power. When we use the name of Jesus, we claim Calvary as our victory. When we use the name of Jesus, we claim the resurrection from the dead. At the name of
name of Jesus. We acknowledge Jesus as our great high priest. Look at somebody on today and say, I need a great high priest. Jesus, he's our king of kings. Jesus, he's our Lord of lords. And so somebody on today, you need the name of Jesus on that job. Take the name of Jesus in your house. Take the name of Jesus in your situation. Take the name of Jesus. Somebody on today need the name of Jesus. After hearing the gospel message of Jesus, the Bible says that unclean spirits were able to leap out of bodies. Hallelujah. And they cried with a loud voice. And many paralytics were healed, delivered, and set free. Somebody in this Texas into jurisdiction holy convocation. You need an introduction to Jesus. Not John Wesley, the leader of a revival movement within the Church of England known as Methodism. Not John Knox, whose prayers were so vibrant and so penetrating and so effective that the Queen Marilyn of Scotland said that I fear John Knox's prayer more than all the assemblies of the army of Europe. Not Martin Luther, that's known for his 95 Thesis for the Catholic Church. Not Bonhoeffer, who was a German Lutheran pastor and theologian and anti-Nazi dissident. Somebody needs the name of Jesus. Not Paul Tillich. Paul Tillich, he was called an existentialist. Hallelujah, during the Nazi period. But somebody on today, you need the name of Jesus. COVID-19 has risen its ugly head once again and look like it's more deadly, more deadly, and more destructive. People thought that COVID was over, but let me tell you something. Look like COVID has come back, and you know why it's come back? Because in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, he said, it's my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. We got too much politics in the church. We got too much compromising in the church. We got too much homonging in the church. Hallelujah. Got too many pimps in the church. But somebody on today, you need to get back to Jesus. Somebody say yes. I need the name of Jesus. Sickness is at an all-time high. Hallelujah. Depression has reached its ugly mark. Suicidal ideation, stress, prostate, pancreatic cancer, stomach cancer, colon cancer, brain cancer, breast cancer, marriages are falling apart, children are misbehaving, disrespectful, little girls are getting pregnant, boys on drugs, but somebody on tonight needs the name of Jesus. Jesus, he's our Rose of Sharon. Jesus, he's our bride and morning star. Jesus, uh, he's our Alpha and Omega. Jesus, uh, he's the first and the last. Uh, Jesus, uh, he's the beginning and the end. Uh, Jesus, uh, he's the ancient of days. Uh, ancient uh, means wisdom uh, and days uh, means everlasting. Uh, Jesus, uh, look at your neighbors at Jesus. He's the bishop uh, of our souls. Uh, Jesus, uh, he's the good shepherd. Jesus, he's the author and finish of our faith. Jesus, 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 if you call that name, demons will leap out. If you call that name, depression got to go. If you call that name, stress has no home because Jesus, he's a born of Gideon. He's a physician right there. Somebody say yes. Let me preach it the way I feel it. 
Somebody on today needs Jesus. So Philip, he preached Jesus. He preached that Jesus can save your soul. He preached that Jesus can get you out of hell. He preached Jesus. Demons leaped out. He preached about Jesus. Paralytics got healed. Somebody on tonight, you might have a limp in your body, but right now, if you grab hold to Jesus, pull him down. He's all over this building. Somebody say, I'm pulling him down. Come into my body. Come into my life. Come into my soul. Come into my immune system. Come into my circulatory system. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. I need you now. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Jesus, 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 not Moses, but Jesus, not Elias, but Jesus, not Jeremiah. There's nothing wrong with him, but somebody on tonight, I need Jesus. was once deep in sin, far from the peace for sure, seeking to rise no more, but the master of the sea heard, look at your neighbor say he heard my despairing cry from the waters, he lifted me from such as I, Jesus. Jesus, I dare you to call his name. Jesus, whatever you're going through, call his name. Somebody on tonight need a reintroduction. You knew, you knew about Jesus, but you got caught up in the world. I dare you on tonight, if you call upon him, he will answer and show you great things. Getting ready to close. You got to know him back in 2013. My mo my my wife and my and my son, because you know I'm an old army man. They, she said, Albert Jr. That's what you call me, Albert Jr. You know, when Bishop is gone and Pastor is gone, it's when you get back to the house, it's Albert Jr. She said, Alba Junior, you need to get you a physical. And you know I'm an army man. You know armies. I don't I only been on sick call about four times in 25 years. Cause I just didn't believe in sick call in the army. You don't you don't go on sick call. But somehow I said, let me listen to my wife and my son. I went to the my my physician. The physician said that there was there was, she didn't know whether there was inflammation, but my PSA was over 1,400. It was off the chain. <laughs> Look at your neighbor say, you don't know what I come to. It was off the chain. Whenever I would have a bowel movement, looked like my bowel movement was obstructed by something because there was a big tumor that was around my prostate, as big as a grapefruit. And you know, when you when you in trouble, you really want to know how much faith you got. Somehow or another is that I got down on my knees and I heard the enemy start laughing at me. 
He said, you done prayed for others and others got healed, but now you in a, you in a life-threatening situation. What are you going to do now? I called on the name of Jesus. And Jesus, I said, if you were with me yesterday, you got the power to be with me. You got the power to be with me today in this big cancer, this 1400 PSA. Don't use the name of Jesus unless you unless you got some power. Next thing I discover, the PSA start going down. The PSA start, the, the tumor shrunk because I call on the name of Jesus. In February of 2015, I was cancer free. Look at your neighbor say, Jesus can fix it every time. So, you know, every three months, every three months I have to go and get a PSA just to make sure that my PSA is all the way down. I just got a PSA a month ago. It was 0.0.0. .0, .0. You see, people, people look at your glory, but they don't know your story. Look at your neighbor say, you should have been with me two, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, and know where the Lord has brought me. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to close. Look at your neighbor say, you looking at a miracle. Look at that one next to you and say, you looking at a miracle. Now they don't want to look at you, go to the one somebody that will look at you and say, you are looking at a miracle. You are looking at a miracle. ready to close there was a false prophet you got to watch every prophet is not a real prophet and look like they are rising up more and more on Facebook trying to prey on people that's in trouble because if a prophet is going to follow leadership and whenever a prophet want to start their own thing and try to do their own thing in the midst of your church they are not with you There was, there was this false prophet that was in Samaria. He called his name Simon. He used sorcery. He used magical arts. He used witchcraft. He used astrology. He used charms and spells and fortune telling. The Bible said he bewitched the people and claimed to be some great one. The people believe Jesus. They believe the introduction of Jesus. They believe Jesus so much that Simon got hold to Jesus and started believing in Jesus. And the Bible say he even got baptized. Look at your neighbor say, preach Jesus. If you preach Jesus, souls will get saved. If you preach Jesus, souls will get delivered. If you preach Jesus, hallelujah, prostitutes. 
will come out the street walking. If you preach Jesus, they will drop their crack bottles. One more point. We must know our limitations. The Bible says is that when the church, the, the, the apostles heard what was going on in Samaria. The Bible says is that what Philip did, he had to step aside. And he sent for Peter and John. And they came. Because salvation is just not enough today. You need the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need the Holy Ghost. I need to speak in tongues. I need to lay hands on the sick so that the sick will get better in the power of the Holy Ghost. So the Bible say, when Peter... Don't, don't, don't worry about when people come to your church and may have something like maybe a little bit more than what you got because it's for the perfecting of the church. Hallelujah. It's for the unification of the body. The Bible said when Peter and John came, the folks got filled with the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you need a reintroduction of the Holy Ghost. Well, on tonight, I believe the Holy Ghost is right here on tonight. Jesus say, I go away, but I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send unto you and I a comforter. He is. He's a gentleman. He is. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and neighbor. I'm going through hell and high water. Hallelujah. The Lord is not pleased with my life. I have some issues in my life. But on tonight, you can get the Holy Ghost. On tonight. Bible say when Pentecost had fully come, that was a sound from heaven. And keep in mind is that they were on one accord. There was a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and clothing tongues of fire appeared on all of their heads, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Not only do I introduce you Jesus, but I introduce those tonight. I introduce to you the Holy Ghost. Reach out and say, Lord, fill me again. Fill me, fill me, fill me. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost in my marriage. I need the Holy Ghost in my body. I need the Holy Ghost in my bones. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. I want to get my shout back. Fill me, Lord. I want to get my worship back. Fill me, Lord. I want to get my praise back. Fill me, Lord. I want to get my bless your name back. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me. If you need a Holy Ghost, come down right now. Come on, come on down. If you need a reintroduction of Jesus, come down right now. Come to this altar right now. Lord, my cup is running dry. Come on, come on. Come down to this altar. Come down to this altar. Come down to this altar. If you need a reintroduction. If 
you need to get your tone back, come on down to this altar right now. Come on. If you need healing in your body, come down to this altar right now. If you need joy bells, come on down to this altar. If you're facing a health crisis, come on down to this altar. If you are depressed, come on down to this altar. If your kids are acting misbehaved, come on down to this altar. Preacher, I need prayer. I need prayer. I need prayer. Come on down to this altar right now. Come on down right here in the center right now. We're going to pray for you right now. We're going to pray for your healing. We're going to pray for your deliverance. We're going to pray that you will get set free on tonight. Come on. Somebody else needs to come right now. You've been wrestling with something. You need to come to this altar right now. Don't, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. It's about you right now. It's about your salvation right now. It's about your deliverance right now. Come on down to this altar right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come, come, come. Look at your neighbor say, it's not too late. It's not too late. Your situation is not too hard for the Lord. If you got a drinking problem, come now, come, come. If you got a drinking problem, come to this altar right now. Let's get delivered. Let's get, let's get delivered. Let's get set free. Let's get set free right now. Come on, come on. there's anybody else here that really needs a prayer, you come on. Right now, don't you waste any more time. We don't have time to waste on this. We, and don't you leave yet. We got another offering we need to take. Come on. But this is more important. Come on. I see some people coming now. You want prayer? Come down now in Jesus' name. This lady here on that cane. Praise the Lord. Don't leave. We're going to get this offering. Pray for that lady there. Praise the Lord. The cane. All right, we're just going to pray. I was just giving instructions. We're going to pray. Praise the Lord. When I was a young child, I'd jump down on the bottom there and help pray, but I can't jump down there like that. But in Jesus' name, we want help for that child. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. If anybody else needs prayer, you come on at this particular time. Come on at this particular time. Whatever it is, bad habits, bad attitude, weakness in your body, in your mind, whatever it is, come in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Who is? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing with me. Yes, Lord. That's what Bishop Mason used to sing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. We 
need you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. God bless you. Thank God for this preacher tonight. Uh, uh, when he said, I'm a preacher about Jesus, yes, sir. I was all right. Because uh, if anybody preach about Jesus and you miss it, it's a good indication that you don't know him. Evidently, he knows Jesus. God bless you. I want to appreciate our online audience. Thank you for being with us. Come on, let's give them a hand. Uh, we look forward to being with you on tomorrow night. Uh, we certainly want to meet the bishops on tomorrow morning at 9.30. Uh, the uh, women department will be here. I think they will be in the sanctuary at 9.30. And we are looking forward to the Lord blessing us on tomorrow. Who do we have dismissing? Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott is coming at this time to pray the dismissal upon us. Come on, put your hands together for the word of God. Amaze, you preach tonight, man. You, you, preach, you preach yourself light. <laughs> God bless you. Come on, put your hands together one more time and tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Asking everyone to stand at this time. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we stand before you today, we want to thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your people. I pray, Father, that you will look down upon this assembly. I pray that you would bless each and every bishop. I pray that you would bless the people of Texas. That you would look upon this assembly and let your presence and your favor rest upon it. This is not just a benediction, but it's the beginning. We pray that your presence will be with us on tomorrow, that your anointing, that you will stretch forth your hands and work sign wonders and miracles in our midst. Show yourself mighty. Do something that you have not done in the name of Jesus. Let yokes be destroyed, strongholds cast down, burdens be lifted, and encourage the discourage. Lord, we're praying that you would be in every service when we depart this place, anointing your preachers again in the name of Jesus. Let your glory be revealed in the name of Jesus, setting captives free destroying strongholds and we'll give your name praise let the house say amen and amen god bless you